Hello everyone and welcome to a beginner reformer workout. We are not using the box, no black pads, no extra props or anything necessary, just a reformer. I'm going to be on all four of my springs. This is a balanced body centerline Cadillac. My setup has two green springs or heavy springs, two red springs that I'd say are about medium, and then one blue spring, which is about a half spring. So every reformer is going to be a little different, but for the most part, I'd say green spring, full spring, red springs a little lighter, and then a blue is like your half spring for those of you who have halves or light springs. So we're gonna get started with footwork. So our foot bar is going to be up. My foot bar only has two positions, either up or down. Some have multiple positions, but for this sake, it's either up or down. Same thing with the headrest, it's either up or down. We're starting with it up. So we're gonna lay ourselves down. We're gonna have our chest feel nice and open. Arms are gonna be reaching long, and we're gonna bring our heels together and our toes apart on, that, on the ball of our foot. While we're here, I want you to find a nice neutral pelvis. So what I mean by that is you've got a little bit of space between your spine and the mat. Your tailbone and your sacrum are pressing down. We're not arched through the back. We're not rounded through the spine. Or something nice and long for us. And while we're here, I just want you to take a couple really big deep breaths. So a big inhale and a big exhale. We're going to do that one more time. A great big inhale in. And a great big exhale. And then on the next inhale, we're going to press through those feet and press out. So once you're done exhaling everything out, inhale as you press on out. Exhale as you come back on in. As we're moving with that inhale out, exhale in, I want you to be squeezing those heels together and really pressing through the balls of your feet. Also think about those collarbones pulling nice and wide, getting that chest nice and open. If ever you need to adjust the springs, adjust the springs. I have mine pretty heavy. I like the resistance. I like having something to push into. Some people not so much. We're going to do two more here. And last one. So when we come back in, we're gonna come onto the arches of our feet, think about wrapping our toes over top, our heels underneath, and then again, inhaling as we press out, exhaling as we come back in. While we're doing these, we're thinking about squeezing our legs in towards each other, really connecting to that inner thigh. I'm a bow-legged person, so I don't like the cue of squeezing your knees because that does not work for me because I have a gap between my legs when I do have my legs straight. So if you ever see me say, squeeze your legs together, but you don't see my knees together, I promise I'm not cheating. It's just my body. <laughs> my bones a little different. Beautiful. Keep inhaling on the way out. Exhaling on the way back in, making sure that spine's staying nice and steady. We're going to do one last one there, pressing out and all the way back in. Awesome. So when we come back in, we're going to come up onto the heels, pulling our toes up towards the ceiling or even back towards our shins, pressing out, exhaling back in. With each foot position, you may feel different parts of your legs. Take more load. For example, pressing through the heels may feel like more of that upper hamstring and into your glutes. It's okay if you don't feel it there. <laughs> Just everyone's, again, their strengths are a little different. And just keeping that breath going, keep reaching through those arms, keeping that chest nice and open. We got two more. And last one. Awesome, so then we're gonna come back down onto the balls of our feet. We're gonna keep our heel partially lifted, so not all the way up on our tiptoes, more like a half. And then when we're ready, pressing out through the ball of our foot and then back on in. And like I mentioned, when we were up on our heels, that each position changes where you may feel a bit of a burn or intensity. 
Um, when we have our heels lifted here, we may feel it more in our quad. So if you're feeling a lot of quad, that's really normal. Try to balance it out as best you can, getting those glutes engaged and working. And again, keeping with that breath, checking in with our chest and our shoulders. I know this is a lot of footwork, but I love footwork. We're gonna get to do two more. And last one, inhaling and exhaling. So we're gonna keep the foot position the same, but we're gonna straighten our legs out and then lower the heels, lift the heels. So pressing out, you lower the heels down, to, down underneath the bar, lift them back on up. As for lowering and lifting, I want you to make sure that you're keeping that inner thigh engaged and that outer thigh and that wrap through your glutes as well. As we lower and lift, the common tendency is to go to the outside of the foot and roll out as you go up and to roll in as you go down. So really try and keep that lift and lower nice and straight through your ankles. Still inhaling to go out, still exhaling to come down. We're going to do two more, and then we're going to combine these last two moves together. So last, lower, and lift. And then we're going to bend our knees and come back into that starting point. So then we're going to combine it together. So pressing out to the straight legs, lower the heels, lift the heels, and then bend back in. And again, inhaling out, lower, exhaling, inhaling, lift, and bending back in. So it's a small little inhale, exhale. So inhaling, exhale, inhale, and bend. There's a little, little short breath in there. Two more, pressing out, lower, lift, bending in. And last one, lower, lift, and bending in. Awesome. So we are going to sit ourselves up, and then we're going to take off two of these springs. So I'm going to take off my two red springs. So I'm going to keep my two heaviest ones on. Adjust as you need, but preferably two springs. So. We're gonna lay ourselves back down. The footwork is not over yet, my friends. We're gonna do some bicycle. So that's a one-legged footwork. So we're gonna take one leg into a tabletop. The other foot is gonna be on that ball of your foot again in that little um, mini high heel. Opening up in your chest, ribs are nice and engaged. And as we straighten, sorry, we're going to reach one foot over top of the foot bar, and as we straighten the foot bar leg, we're going to bend in our free leg, turning a bicycle. Sorry for the weird setup there. And pressing. So as the leg bends in, you reach, and as you press, you pull it in. Awesome. Inhaling out, exhaling back in. We got two more here, and then we're gonna make it into a scissor. So coming back in, so what I mean by scissor is we're gonna take that free leg, we're gonna lift it up towards the ceiling. As we, <clears throat> as we straighten the leg, we're gonna lower the leg. As we come back in, we're gonna lift. So when we're ready, so now we're going to take it into a scissor. So we're going to straighten that leg out long still. And as we straighten that foot bar leg, the working leg, we're going to lift the free leg up towards the ceiling. So bend and lower, inhale and lift. Exhale, lower, inhale, lift. Keep 
this leg is feeling a little heavy, you can always bend at the knee and keep the range of motion. We're going to do this last one lifting and lowering, and then we're going to do the two on the other leg. So starting with that leg extended on the ball of your foot, and when we're ready, we're going to press out, bend the knee in towards our chest. Exhale, come in, extend the foot long. Keeping that chest nice and open, keeping the heel lifted. We're going to do one last one. Keep that leg nice and long and then we lift it up straight, press out, lower it straight, come back in. Inhaling out, exhaling in, keep pressing through the arms, reaching through the feet and the fingers. <sighs> I know I'm feeling it. You got two more, lifting and lowering. Last one, lifting and lowering and coming back on in. Awesome job, guys. So we got two more things to do with our um, footwork here. We're gonna bring our heels to the outside of our foot bar. We are up on those heels and we are going to bring our hips into a little bit of a hover, just a tiny little baby hover. You can maybe fit a couple fingers under there, nothing too crazy. And then we're pressing out and pulling ourselves back in. As we're pressing out and coming back in, use the back of your arms, use those arms to help yourself stay up. Squeeze your glutes, I'm really pulling with those hamstrings to come back in. Just maintaining that really light hover. I'm going to do this last one here. When you come back in, lower the hips back down. Awesome. So very last thing, we're going to bring our feet back into um, about hip distance apart on the ball of our foot. We're actually trying not to open the carriage up too much, so we're trying to keep those springs nice and still. We're going to really press down through those arms, really open up through the chest. Keep the ribs in. We are going to try to lift up into a shoulder bridge and back down. But before we do that, we've got to reach back and lower our headrest down just so that we don't roll up onto our neck. It'll feel a lot more comfortable down here. So when we're feeling ready, we're going to tuck our tailbone in. We're going to roll ourselves up into a shoulder bridge. Try to keep those springs nice and closed and roll yourself all the way back down. As we're lifting and lowering, try to make sure that you're reaching those knees like you're trying to send them over top of the foot bar. It'll help really engage those hamstrings. And think about pulling your heels towards your glutes like you're trying to kick yourself in the butt. Lifting and lowering. We're going to do two more here. Lifting up, lowering yourselves back down. And last one, rolling ourselves all the way up. And back all the way down. Fantastic. So, we are going to be grabbing hold of our handles. So I just need to adjust the watch here because it always rolls on to my, get stuck there. So with our handles, we're gonna bring our legs up into a bit of a tabletop. Shoulder blades are gonna be down our back. We're gonna keep our head down for now. And then we're just going to press those hands down towards the carriage on either side of our hips and back on up. You don't want those straps to be hitting the shoulder blocks, so just make sure your arms are wide enough that they're not getting stuck on there. Inhaling to press out, exhaling to return. We're 
We're gonna do three more. Two more, all the way down. And that last one. Beautiful. So now we're gonna add in a head float to this movement. So as we reach the arms long, we're gonna curl our head and chest on up and rolling ourselves all the way back down. If lifting your head up does not feel right for you, instead you could think about as the arms go down, you just pull your belly button in a little bit more just to get that extra core work and call it good there. I'm gonna do two more here, curling up and curling back down. And the last one. So when we come back down, we're gonna let those elbows bend. We're still having our palms facing forward and we're just going to extend those arms out, pressing them down towards the mat and back on in. As we reach those arms out long, make sure that those shoulders are staying on the mat. When we have really tight biceps or really tight chest, as we reach the arms out, the shoulders may want to pop forward. Don't let that happen. I'd rather you go only part way down and keep your chest open and go all the way down and bracing the front of your chest. We're gonna do one last one there. And then, like the first move, we're gonna add in a head float. So we're gonna reach long as you extend, and bend, come back in. We're reaching long, extending, we're curling up, and bending back in. Reach long, curl, and bend. Three more, reaching long, pulling that belly button in, and bending, two more. And last one. Awesome, so then we're gonna bring the arms out wide to the outside. I want you to have a little press in through those handles so you're not feeling the blocker. Try not to hit the blocker again. We're gonna keep that tension in our arms. So we're gonna pull the arms towards our sides and control them back on out. But again, try not to let that the carriage hit the stopper. And back on out, squeezing. Inhaling and exhaling. We got two more, pulling in, controlling back on out, last one. Oops. And then when we come back in, this time you can hit the blocker. Awesome. So shake the legs out if you need to shake the legs out. So we're going to go into a little prep for 100. We're not going to do a full 100 because I know we've already done a lot. For those of you who know, you know. For those of you who don't know, another video. <laughs> 100 is a lot. So we're going to go ahead and bring those arms out just like um, up towards the ceiling like we started. We're going to bring our legs back into a tabletop. We're going to curl ourselves on up just like the beginning. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to reach the legs out nice and long, and then we're going to bend them back in. The lower you go, the harder it's going to be. So if you're feeling this in your back, reach the legs higher up towards the ceiling rather than lower down towards the floor. It should feel a little more comfortable, or you can just keep the legs in and breathe there instead. We're gonna do two more, reaching long, back on in, the last one. So then we're gonna reach the legs up towards the ceiling, keep them straight or straight-ish if you need, lower the legs, lift the legs. Again, the lower you go, the harder it's going to be. Use that breath. Two more. And last one. And then when we're ready, Bending everything in, relaxing down. So we're gonna hook up those handles and we are gonna come off. So we're gonna get set up for a plank series. We're going to be going from our knees. So feet will be up against the shoulder blocks. We're gonna be on one green and one blue spring or one heavy and one half. 
You can definitely be on to heavier springs if you have more back and core instabilities or injuries. So it just adds necessary, but for me, a green and a blue is just right. So feet are gonna be back against the shoulder blocks. Like I said, we are gonna stay on our knees today, just to keep it simple. Shoulder blades are gonna be down our back. If your elbows are pointed outwards, pull them in a bit. It'll help activate your underarm and your lat. We're gonna find a place where we feel really strong for our core, so pulling our abdominals in, trying to flatten out that lower back, squeezing our glutes to also to help lower, or to help our lower back stabilize. And then from here, we're gonna inhale as we press it up, and then exhale as we come back in. As we reach out further, I want you to again check in with the integrity of your spine. So are you still squeezing through your glutes? Are you keeping your spine nice and long? Are you supporting it with your core? And are you pushing and pulling with those lats? If one of those pieces feels like it's lacking, find a way to ask it to turn on a little more, even if mind over matter. We got two more in here. And last one. Beautiful. So we're gonna come back on in. We're gonna shift our hips back towards our feet. We're gonna keep our spine nice and long, so more of a slightly more neutral spine than we just had. So make sure that that pelvis is still reaching long. We're gonna bring those arms nice and straight. And again, have those elbows pointed in a little bit, shoulder blades down your back. From here, we're only gonna extend the legs, but we wanna keep our pelvis steady. So we're not arching and bending and doing all the things. No twerking. I can't do it if I wanted to. <laughs> so spine stay nice and long, abs holding nice and, and tight. Reach the leg out, back on in. Squeeze through the glutes, back on in. And goal is to keep the spine nice and strong here. I'm gonna do one last one there. Then we're gonna round through our spine. So still sitting back towards our heels, this time tucking the pelvis in. So pull the pubic bone up. Use those lower abdominals like crazy, shoulder blades down your back. The more curl you have, the less straight your legs are going to get. So the more range of motion you have in your spine, the less range of motion you're going to have in your legs. So try not to get excited and push your legs out too far. <laughs> it's always my thing. So curling through your spine, you're going to again try not to change the shape of your spine as you reach the legs out and back on in. So don't let that pelvis shift as you go out. So the flatter your back, the more your legs get to move. But we are trying to get that nice deep curl going. Last one in there. Back on it. So now instead of a round back, we're going to extend through our spine. So having a little bit more of an arch to our spine, think about lifting our tailbone up, squeeze with our inner thigh so that our uh, sits bones don't go out diagonally. So pull it all in. Feeling nice and lifted to your chest, press out, pull in. This one should feel probably like the most range of motion that you get to have because your pelvis is already in an extended position. Again, squeezing with that inner thigh. We're going to do two more. And that last one there. Awesome. So grand finale here. We're going to try and hug our knees on the mat. So 
We're going back to that flatter spine or that rounded back. Classical, we do the rounded back. Um, a lot of other studio practices do a more flatter back for this. I'm happy either way, but pick one. So consciously pick which one you're going to do and then perform it. Not like a, I'll see what happens because then you're not really in control of what's going on. So I'm going to pick a rounder back just because it's easier for me to talk in. So rounding through the spine, you're going to press with those feet. You're going to try and hover the knees. As you straighten the legs, they're going to pick up away, bending in. The non a traditional knees off knee stretch series, more of an introduction to our plank and our knees off. We're going to do that last one. When you come back in, control yourself down. Keyword. <laughs> And then we're going to go into our front splits. So this is our cool down. This is our relaxed time. I'm going to use the front of the frame rather than my foot on the foot bar because it kind of helps keep my back feeling a little longer. You're welcome to bring your foot up on the foot bar if you have the range of motion is available to you. So the foot on the frame. You're going to have ball of your foot on. Just make sure your heel isn't digging into any of the hooks on the springs. We're going to reach the leg back and then we're going to reach long. Come back on it. As we reach ourselves backwards, I want you to think about pulling the, the hip of the leg that you have forward back behind you. So making sure that we don't twist and do an open split. We're trying to keep our hips nice and square. If you have your foot up on the foot bar, that rule still goes. It's just going to be a little more challenging. We're going to do one last one on this side. And then we're going to swap to the other foot. So bringing that other leg. That foot's against the shoulder block, so you have something nice to push into. The other foot's going to be forward on the ball of your foot. Squeezing through the glute and making sure you're pulling the hip backwards as you go. The foot bar is there more for balance purposes than it is pushing, so if you find yourself doing all the pushing on the bar, try to be a little lighter on it. beginner workout here on the reformer nothing too long but we sit, hit every everything that we needed to we got some glute work in we got lots of leg work in footwork some upper body shoulders definitely lots of core work and all the good stuff okay friends thank you so much for watching make sure to leave a like down below if you like this video comment what you want to see more I am planning on doing more equipment videos, more mat videos, ranging from beginner all the way up to some advanced work. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't and you want to see more or even click the, um, the notification bell so and then you get notified whenever there is a new video coming out. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all very, very soon.